During the D-Day landings on the 6th of June 1944, two major elements of the German armed forces were noticeable by their seeming absence. The first was the Luftwaffe, which only managed to make a few sorties against the invasion armada, with two fighters famously strafing Sword Beach. The second was the Kriegsmarine, the German Navy, which was surprising, considering the Allies were largely arriving in France by sea. The Kriegsmarine had been progressively written down in the weeks preceding D-Day, as the Allies prepared to invade. But the Germans still had a reasonably strong force of destroyers, large torpedo boats and E-boats based in French ports. There was also a force of U-boats available. Command of naval forces in the French coastal areas was exercised from Paris, under the command of Vice Admiral Theodore Kranke. As soon as the Allied invasion fleet began to appear off the French coast, the Kriegsmarine was alerted. As soon as possible, the 6th gunboat flotilla was deployed along the Normandy coast, but its vessels were smashed to pieces by the heavy guns of the Allied warships approaching the coast. Many of the gun batteries protecting the Normandy coastline were manned and operated by the German Navy, and they opened a furious fire on the approaching Allied armada. At Le Havre, the 5th Torpedo Boat Squadron moved out to sea with just three combat-ready boats. Emerging out of a smokescreen laid off Sword Beach, the three German e-boats confronted hundreds of Allied ships of every type and description. The Germans launched 18 torpedoes, narrowly missing some of the huge battleships, but one hit the Norwegian destroyer Svenner, which sank quickly with 32 casualties. And that was about the extent of German naval interference with the D-Day landings on the 6th of June. But the Germans decided upon a more ambitious scheme, a plan to launch a strong raid into the flank of the Allied armada that was ferrying men and supplies across the English Channel to Normandy 24 hours a day. Admiral Kranker ordered the surviving ships of the 8th destroyer flotilla to leave the Gironde estuary and sail to Brest to prepare for the action. The vessels were the Type 36A destroyers Z24 and Z32, and the former Royal Netherlands Navy destroyer ZH1, which had been taken over by the Germans. But even moving the vessels to Brest in preparation for the raid was problematic, for the British had broken German naval codes and knew the location of the German ships. Royal Canadian Air Force bow fighters attacked the flotilla as it transited the Bay of Biscay, in the process damaging Z-32. Once safely moored in Brest, the destroyer's anti-aircraft armament was greatly increased. Another vessel was also added to the raid, a large torpedo boat, the T-24. On the 8th of June 1944, the German force sailed from Brest bound for Cherbourg to attack Allied naval forces bombarding German shore positions there. The raid was commanded by Captain Theodor von Bertelsheim, but again their radio communications betrayed their intentions to Allied codebreakers and the Royal Navy was able to send out a strong force to stop the German flotilla. The intention was to prevent it from interfering with the continuing landing and shore bombardment operations. Commanding the Royal Navy's 10th destroyer flotilla was Captain Basil Jones. 
he had eight destroyers divided into two divisions. The 19th Division consisted of the Royal Navy vessels HMS Tata, Jones' flagship, and HMS Ashanti, and the Royal Canadian Navy destroyers HMCS Huron and Haida. The 20th Division consisted of HMS Eskimo and HMS Javelin. There were also two Polish destroyers, ORP Piorun and Bleiskowicza. Jones Flotilla detected the German ships on radar at 0100 hours on the 9th of June, the Germans 30 miles east-nor'east of Ile de Bats, a small island off the French coast. Heavy fire began to be exchanged between the ships and the Germans fired torpedoes as well. HMS Tata was hit repeatedly and was set alight, but her crew brought the blazers under control and she stayed in the fight. With HMS Ashanti, Tata closed in on the German destroyer ZH-1, battering her with their guns. Ashanti launched two torpedoes at virtually point-blank range. ZH-1's bows was blown off by one of the torpedoes. His ship doomed. Captain Klaus Barkow ordered the crew to abandon ship. Once most of the men were away, ZH-1 was scuttled at 0240. Barkow went down with his ship, along with 38 other German sailors. British vessels stopped and rescued 140 from life rafts or in the sea, while eight Germans managed to paddle to France and reach German lines. While this action was occurring, the two Canadian destroyers chased the German vessels Z-24 and T-24, the Germans steaming into a British minefield, causing the Canadians to break off the chase. The two Germans regrouped and came about, ready to fight, but the Canadians were gone. The Canadians instead happened upon flotilla commander Captain von Bertelsheim's Z-32. German destroyer was heavily damaged in the exchange of fire. After taking a terrific battering, the German destroyer moved off at high speed, but was in danger of sinking. Von Bechtelsheim deliberately ran his vessel aground on Bats Island. The German raid on the Allied beachhead was a complete failure. Two valuable destroyers were lost, 39 men were killed and 140 captured. The Germans had failed to get near the Allied invasion fleets, showing how effective the Royal Navy's flank defences were in deterring these sorts of actions. Interestingly, you can visit two of the Allied vessels that defeated the German raid. HMCS Haida is on display at Hamilton, Ontario in Canada, while the ORP Bleiskowicza is a museum ship in Gdynia, Poland. Following the raid on the 9th of June 1944, which came to be called the Battle of Ushant, the Kriegsmarine limited itself to making small night raids against the edges of the invasion fleet area, achieving a few successes with e-boats, destroying a few landing craft and tank landing ships, but nothing to unduly worry the Allies. In August 1944, the Germans unleashed a fleet of new midget submarines and human torpedoes in an effort to disrupt the flow of men and supplies pouring into Normandy. In Ritterkreuzträger Schreibers Martirold haben die Einzelkämpfer auf dem Meere einen ihrer tapfersten Vertreter. I've made a series of videos about these extraordinary craft and their operations. Links in the end screen. Many thanks for watching, please subscribe and share, and also help to support my channel at PayPal and Patreon. You can also visit my new audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. Details on all of that in the description box below.